Hi guys, today we're going to be running through this book animation exercise that I gave you last week. Let's get to it. Click on effects on the toolbox, under effects, drag down the fusion composition, put the playhead on it, and let's click on the fusion tab. Let's drag that up a bit, create some space, click on the draw viewer toggle button, then let's drag the middle point so it's kind of centered. Now let's pull in an image from the media pool. I downloaded this. The link is in the description. Right click on it and click on rename to rename it. Let's drag that to the left viewer. We see it's just the left part of the image. To simulate the right side of the image, we're going to bring in a transform node. Connect that to the transform node. Drag that to the right viewer. On that inspector, click on flip. And um, there it is. We have left and right side. Great. Now let's um, bring in a cube 3D node. Shift spacebar. Cube 3D. And let's connect this page to the front. So right click on output of the page and drop it on cube 3D and click on front. That's how we do that. Then we just drag that to the right viewer. We see this, this is not exactly how we want the book to look. So we go to con under inspector, uncheck lock width and height. Then for the width, we'll do a calculation based on this resolution of the image. So we divide 448 by 640, we get 0 0.7. So we go there and type 0 0.7 for the width. Then for the height, we leave it at one. Then the depth, we set it to 0 0.075. For subdivision for width, we drag it to 40. Same thing for height. And um, we're good to go. But this colors on that, we need to change that. So we click on there and change the colors to white for each of the faces of the cube. Okay. For the back, the back is always white. So we just leave it that. You see that the top and the sides of the book are just plain white. We need to create something like a pattern that makes it look as if it's a layer of pages. To do that, let's bring in a fast noise node, drag that to the left viewer. Under the colors tab, incre increase alpha to one, change the color from black to something slightly brownish, something like that. Click OK. Let's go to the noise tab, under scale, uncheck lock XY. And for the X scale, set it to 100. So we have that kind of pattern. Fine. Let's copy this fast noise and paste. Now for this pasted one, we go to scale, set that back to two. Then for the Y scale, set that to 100. If we drag that to the right viewer, we see we have that. Let's make the second fast noise just slightly more contrasty. Yeah, so they look kind of similar. Okay, so moving on. Let's rename them. Right click on that, rename it to horizontal. Horiz, the short, then the sec, the first fast noise, let's re rename that to vert. Okay, drag that there and drag the horiz there too. Right click on output, drop it on keep 3D, connect it to right. Right click again and drop it on keep 3D, connect it to left. Let's make a copy of this keep 3D and paste it below here for the other half of the book. Right click on there, drop it here. Same thing, drop it for right and then right click, drop it, then left. Okay. Right click on there, drop this on this for the front. Let's create some, arrange that a bit. Then let's do the same thing for horizontal, but this time for the top and then for the bottom for both cubes. If you drag this to the left viewer and drag that to the right viewer, we see that we have edges of the book. But we need to create like a back, the back of the book, like that band at the back of the book, right? So we're going to copy the cube 3D, paste. Let's bring in a merge 3D node. Let's connect this cube 3D to the merge 3D 
and connect this other cube 3D. Yeah, this one we just pasted. Now we need to make some adjustments on this cube 3D. Let's bring in a background node and create a gradient. This is just a quick and dirty pattern look for this band. So let's just change the color of that to gray. So we have that gradient there for that background. Let's bring in a mosaic blur. And add, drag that to the left lure. Let's make it hexagon, then drop the pixel frequency to something like 28. And we're good. Then let's bring in an edge detect node. Drag that to the left viewer. Let's increase the brightness a bit. Okay. Then let's bring in the transform node. Let's drag that to the left viewer. Let's give it an angle of 15. We see all that edges there to eliminate that. We go to edges and click on mirror. So we have that. So that's the pattern we are going to use for this black back of the book. Let's group it by right clicking and clicking on group. Then rename the group to pattern. How apt. <laughs> so let's um, now connect pattern to every face of this cube. This time you can just drag and drop because we want to connect every face of the cube. But let's drag that to the viewer. We see that black thing, but we need to resize the cube to just be at the edge there. So we go to make some adjustments. For the depth, we change it to 0 0.08, right? Then for the width, the height remains. So for this height, for this width, we set it to 0 0.001. So you see that line in the middle, that's where it is at. So we need to move it. But for the height, let's set it to 1.02. So it's slightly higher than the actual content of the book, much like the way books are typically. So we need to move it to the back of the book. So we go to transform and we move it along that axis. So we drag it down, we make it 0.35. Yeah, so we need to move back just a wee bit more. So we put it 0 0.355 and that looks just about fine. Great. Yeah, I think we're good to go on that. One other thing we need to do is move it a bit 0 0.02. So it moves slightly to the outer part of the image. So we put a minus there, so it moves slightly to the outer part so that this side flushes with the side of the book and the other side sticks out a little bit. Because we're going to put a cover at the other part there. So now we need to create a back cover. Right click on this cube, make another copy of it, right click and paste. We need to connect this pattern to this cube too. So we just click and drag and drop till we connect to all the faces of the cube 3D. Let's drag that to the left view we see. It's still the same size of the cube. We need to make some adjustments here. Let's connect that cube 3D to the merge 3D. And let's just um, arrange things to make it look a little better. Something like that is fine. Now let's drag that merge 3D to the right viewer. Let's rename all the cubes first. Right click on this one, rename it to band one. And um, right click on this, rename it to back one. Let's change settings for this cube. Set the depth to 0 0.001, so it's flat. See that line in the middle? Then the height to 1.02. So we see that sticking out there. And then for this, we just make it 0 0.705. Wait, so it sticks out. We go to transform, we need to move it. I could use a transform node for this, but let's reduce the number of nodes we're going to use. So the Z, I'm just gonna move it just to the point where it covers the back. So 0 0.0375. To move this thing around, the way I'm moving it around, you just hold down Alt on the keyboard and 
pull down the middlemost button and drag it around. So I move this back on the x axis by 0 0.002. The, the edges, the cubes kind of touch. And now it looks like we have one half of the book ready. Select all that, right click, copy, and let's paste that here. Let's rearrange it like, like so. Bring in a merge 3D node, connect the first cube to that, and then connect all these two cubes to that merge 3D. Let's just arrange it so we all look aligned. Drag that to the left viewer. Now I need to move this band here to the other side. Okay, so I click on this band. See why we renamed it so we know what is what. Click on the transform tab and then we simply just tap minus in front of the X value there. And then it jumps to where it's supposed to be. So if we go there, drag it around, zoom in, holding down control and scrolling the mouse wheel, see it's just perfect where it is, it is supposed to be. But we need to now go to the back page and tap minus there so it moves back to touch the edge of that band for the back. So we have two halves of the book already. Let's bring in a merge 3D node. Let's connect both of them to the merge 3D. Drag that to the right viewer. So they're kind of on top of each other. So we need to move them apart. So if you move them apart, you see they are both facing the same direction. So we need to rotate one of them to face the other one. So we go to my 3D one, we go to the Y and rotate that 180. And now to get them to move simultaneously as I'm adjusting each of them, I'm going to pin my 3D one then select my 3D2, go to the transform node, right click on Z, click on expression, copy whip the Z to the Z of my 3D1. Okay, let's unpin that. Now, if we move this now, they move together, but I want them to move in an alternating fashion. So I go to my 3D2, I go to the beginning of that expression, I type a minus in front of it and press enter. So each time I move my 3D1, that other my 3D2 moves in the opposite direction. So we can use that to adjust this. I think 0 0.375 does the trick. That's fine. So we have the book model done. A little time consuming, but painless. Now to the next part, we animate the book. Let's bring in a transform 3D node and drag that to the right viewer. I just want to rotate the book so it sits on horizontally on the plane, something like that. We need to rotate and open the book. Click on my 3D one, bring in a transform 3D node. Let's move this forward a bit. Now for the transform 3D node, if I go to the Y value and rotate it, it's rotating about the center there. I want the pivot point to be at the back of the book. So I'm going to Reset that, expand pivot. I don't know, is it pivot or pivot? Ah. Anyway, expand pivot. I'm going to move it to the back of the book. The width of the book is 0 0.7. So the I'm going to move it to by 0 0.35, which is 0 0.7 divided by two, but it's moving to the front. So I need to put a minus in front of that. So it moves to the right point. Yeah. Now, if we rotate that, we see the book opening. Yay. So let's animate this. We go to frame 10, click on that to make it keyframe. Okay. So we move to frame 40 and set that to 166. Let's put a minus in front of that. So it looks like that. So if you play that, we see the book opening. We go to the spline editor. Click on zoom to fit, click on select all, click on smooth. And then we have, let's just reduce that upper handle a little bit, something like that. Let's close the spline editor. And if we play this, let's play that and see. So we have that. Good. 
but I don't want to create a stiff book. So I'm going to go here and bring a Bender 3D node. Let's go to frame 10. Let's make some settings here. Let's click on Bend tab. Make sure it's the x-axis. Set the angle to 90. And um, let's set the center to 0. Let's bend it and see if it's bending at the right point. But you see that white showing? We need to click on Group Objects. Great. So we can go and set this back to 0. Go to our frame 10. Keyframe that point. We are going to go from frame 10 to frame 40. So the middle point is frame 25 in between there. So I'm going to set that to 0 0.15. Then I'm going to go to frame 40 and set this to minus 0 0.075. So it's, it's bent the wrong way. So I'm going to move that minus. Okay, that's bent right way. I'm also going to go to the middle frame here. Set that to 0, 0 0.15. It should be minus 0 0.15. Okay. So the first keyframe, 0, like that. So we have that. That opens nicely. First keyframe, 0. Second keyframe, minus 0 0.15. Next keyframe is 0 0.075. Okay, we got that. Great. Now let's go to Spline Editor, click Zone to Fit, select all the keyframes, click on Smooth, click on that, just that point, press F on the keyboard, then this point, let's drag this, drag that handle down a bit, something like um, that. And this, this particular handle here, let's drag this down like so and um, that should be fine so if we play that back we see that great so we are done with the book opening part you could stop here and say we are done with the book opening but nah let's do a little jazz arrange that a little bit let's bring in a bender note here for the second half of the page i want the book to share a little when it opens okay so i'm going to go to frame 25 just about i think from 25 is a point yeah around this point i'm gonna go there go to blender 3d go to share make sure it's the z axis set that to 90. then i'm going to see how it bends there i want it to share that way so i want it to set it to 0 0.035 okay has to look okay okay 0 0.035 works so i'm going to go to frame 40 keyframe that point I just set, then I'm going to go back by to frame 25 and set that to zero. So if we play this, you see what happens. The book seems to be opening under the pressure of the other one. <laughs> All right, guys, that's, that's just cool, right? <laughs> okay, now let's um, move on. It looks like it's just sharing on that one point. So I want the book to move however slightly to the left when it opens. So what we're going to do, we're going to simulate that movement a little bit. We click on this transform. And then I go to frame 25. And the X value, we keyframe it. And we go to frame 40. We'll move it back by 0 0.008, minus 0 0.008. So if we play this back, it looks like it's moving right. Cool. Just a minor thing that makes it look as if mm, it's moving right. Cool. Let's go to the spline editor for the bender and just select all the keyframes by pressing Ctrl A and then pressing F on the keyboard. We go to the transform tool. We do the same thing for the transform. Smooth. And um, there we go. If we play that back now, we see we have that. So you don't even notice the movement, but it looks organic. So we need to just add some flair to this. It's not just some book opening. There should be some one or two pages that just moves separately from that movement, right? So I'm going to bring in, let's just arrange things a little bit. So it's a bit more compressed and we can add image plane without moving up and down the note grid. 
Let's bring in an image plane. That image plane will be for the lower one. So I'm going to connect that output there from the transform to the image plane. Let's, um, to this image plane, let's add a Bender 3D node. And to that, let's add a Transform 3D node. And let's connect that to this Merge 3D. So we see the plane there, it's so large. First thing we do, we go to the image plane 3D, go to Transform, go to Scale, set that to 0 0.7. So it's the right size right now. So I want to See, it's sitting pretty there. Great. I want to move it up a bit so it's not sitting below a page there. So 0 0.002 looks fine. Great. Next thing we do, we move it a bit inwards. So it sits exactly on the page. Remember, we moved this particular one back a bit. Yeah. So we shared it backwards, so the image plane needs to move back just a little bit too. Okay. Uh, positioning done. Note the values there. The X value is minus 0 0.02 and the Z value is 0 0.002. Now we go to Bender 3D. Go to point where the book thing that's fine. Let's set the Bender X axis 90 degrees. And then let's bend it and see. Okay, so it's bending correctly. Set to 0 0.09. Let's see where, okay. So I need to make sure the center is zero there. And then, then I go to frame 40. Go to frame 20. And set that to zero. So if I go to this place, I go to the transform node, let's set the rotation. See the rotation is rotating about the center part. So I'm going to go to pivot and set the X value to minus 0 0.35, much like what we did for the other cubes. So it rotates about the right axis. So I make sure that the pitch sits just nicely on the other pages. Just make it roundish, 17.75, minus 17.75. Keyframe that. Let's go back to frame 25 and let's set this to zero. So if we play this back, you see like that. So it creates the illusion of the page just rising under the pressure of the movement. Great stuff. We could add multiple other image planes to create multiple images doing that. But you see the image, the image plane sticking out there. We need to correct that. So I'm going to move this back in like so. For this image plane, let's click two-sided so that the lighting is two-sided. Make a copy of it and paste. Let's connect the output from page to that image plane. Let's drag that to the left viewer. Then let's add a Bender 3D node. Let's add a Transform 3D node. So on the Bender 3D node, let's drag that to the left viewer. Go to center, pull the center to the right. So it's one, make the axis X, then angle 90. And we bend this, it's not at the right point. So we need to drag that center to zero. Great, so yeah, so it's bending at the right point now. Let's go to frame 10, render 3D, set the value to zero. We are going to make the transition from frame 10 to frame 60. So the midpoint for that is 35 between those two keyframes. Set that to minus 0 0.15. And then we go to frame 60. I'm going to set that to 
0 0.2. Let's go to the transform 3D. On the pivot, set it to 0 0.35. Put a minus in front of that. OK. So we make sure that at this last point, this is completely rotated. But for the Bender 3D, this is actually supposed to be 0 0.2. We set that to 0 0.2. Now we go here and increase that value a little bit so it sits perfectly on the image, on the cubes. Let's click on that so we get to see it better. Something like that. So it sits on there. Perfect. And we need to move it in a little bit. So I'm going to do that and move it in just so it touches. Great. Now let's um keyframe keyframe that point and then we go to frame 10 and drop this value for the y rotation to zero. Go to spline editor for the bender 3D, zoom to fit. Select all the keyframes and then, then click on smooth. Then for that particular one, we press F, click on this keyframe here and drag that handle in a little bit, like so, something like that. Then click on that other keyframe here, drag that handle so it looks like so. Close the spline editor, go to transform 3D4, go to the spline editor, Select all the keyframes, Control A, then F on the keyboard to flatten it. Let's drag that other one here, it's like so. And I think we are good to go. Close the spline editor. Let's play it. So we have this beautiful stuff. Book is practically done. So I'm just going to drag a camera 3D node and drop it on the view to automatically create a merge node with a camera 3D. And hopefully with that same view, right? So we go here and let's bring in three lights, two spotlights, and then shift space bar, bring in an ambient light. So we connect all three to the merge 3D. Okay. Then we go to Spotlight, go to Ambient Light. Let's, change, let's add, increase that to 0 0.4. Let's go to Spotlight. Let's just increase the angle to 90. The second Spotlight, angle to 90, Decay Type to Linear. Same thing with the second, the other Spotlight. And then let's drag my 3D to the Viewer. And let's, let's go to Single Viewer Mode. Let's drag the handle for the f one of the spotlights there, and then the other one. You know, that's just the ambient light. Let's move this down here, and let's move it up a bit, like so. But I need to rotate them to face the book. So I'm going to go to, let's move it back just a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm going to move them back just a bit. I I think that should be fine, like so. Then let's go to that, click on that to toggle the rotation and click to rotate it to face the book. Yeah, I think that's facing the book just fine. Then for this one, select it, click on the rotation toggle, and I rotate it to face the book. I'm holding on Alt and holding down the control button and dragging the view to do all these perspective changes. I rotate it as such to face the book. And um, I think we are done likewise for the model. Great. I bring in the render 3D node. Connect that to the render 3D node. Tick lighting and shadows. Change that to OpenGL renderer. Drag that to the viewer. The camera is not is not quite where I want it to be, so I go to transform. In fact, what I'm going to do is just drag that merge to the viewer. Delete this camera 3D. I don't want to do any hard work of moving camera around. Let's just drag a fresh camera here. 
and drag that to the view. And we go to render a 3D, it's perfect. Okay. Now we have that middle section there. It's not cool. So I go to the transform 3D for the upper cube. I'm going to make it move to the left a little bit as the lower half shares, right? So I'm going to go to... Now I'm going to drag it such that just touches it like so. Then I'll keyframe that point and I go to the point where this shear starts, which is at frame 30. And I set this back to zero. So if we play this now, you see this thing shares and bam. So it's perfect. Let's connect render 3D to media out. Let's just play for now. Let's go to the edit page. Let's put a background underneath it, under generators, bring in the four color gradient. I'm not going to make any adjustments, just put it underneath it. And then we play it. And it plays practically real time. Nice. That's why I reduced the number of nodes in there. But I see this funny black thing at the back there. Let's play it back. What's that black thing there? So I'm going to go to Fusion. I want to eliminate that black thing there. So I'm going to go to... You see the image planes are not particularly... So I'm just checking things. Then I go to this bender. I see this bender is the problem. Yeah. So I'm going to go to the settings for the bender and make sure I tick group objects so it's perfect now. Let's click on this and make sure group objects is ticked. So we're good on that. When we have multiple objects connected, it's always good to have group objects ticked. So we play this back, that black bind thing is there. But we see that the image planes are kind of misaligned. Let's play full screen. See the, yeah, the image planes are misaligned. I'm going to go to transform 3D for the nodes, for the image planes. Then make sure that I keyframe that point. Copy this movement minus 0 0.017, then I paste it in here so that then I go here to keyframe this, then paste the minus 0 0.017, enter. So they all sit at the center. Then I go to frame 30. I set this to plus 0 0.017. Okay, and I click on this too. I just set this back to zero. And I go to edit the frame, edit page and play it back. Then we have the image planes following the right. The turn of the book. So we see that, we see this going on. And thank you for joining me on this one. It's a long, long one. And I hope you hung in there till the very end. I'm just going to make a few adjustments. I'm going to put the composition in the description for you to download and do with as you wish. And I hope you enjoyed this one. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers.